Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. It's Cyber Ninja Friday, you bastards. No one has lost the state of Arizona more than Donald Trump. <laughs> he keeps losing again and again and again, even worse than he thought. <laughs> For months, the former president has claimed that the sham partisan audit in Arizona's Maricopa County would reverse the results and somehow declare him the victor. But overnight, a draft report of the so-called air quotes audit <laughs> by a group calling itself the Cyber Ninjas found that not only did Donald Trump lose Arizona, but he lost by even more votes than previously realized. In other <laughs> words, they found he was an even bigger loser than the first time around. But here's the thing. The news here isn't that this proves Joe Biden was the legitimate winner in Arizona. He already was. Right. It didn't need confirmation or affirmation by the cyber ninjas. It was based on sham questions, this audit, and sham concerns, and the results of which, and maybe the goal all along, was to raise doubt, to make yeah, people thanks. believe that something might have been stolen when it was not. I know nothing. Oh, this is so, uh, this is so, mwah, everybody, mwah. Uh, so Cyber Ninja released their draft report. Uh, it was out last night around 1030. Not that anybody who, uh, you know, was uh, messaging me or, or typing to me about how Cyber Ninjas is going to make Donald Trump president tomorrow. How? I had no idea. Uh, but <laughs> I already knew the draft had shown that nobody has lost the state of Arizona more than Donald Trump, except for perhaps... Oh, the Mexican government? Yeah, remember 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, when they were forced to hand it over to the United States? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's that. But <laughs> I just couldn't believe that people who are so wrapped up in this sham, this fraud, it, this con, this game, uh, didn't know that the draft report was available, and uh, they were screaming at me that I was going down. <laughs> Tomorrow, I was going down. And when I politely told them, I already know <laughs> that the sham fraud con fraud it uh, actually produced almost exactly the same result as the correct Secretary of State certified result, um, except that Cyber Ninjas found that Donald Trump lost by more than you thought, nothing that would change the result of the election in any way, shape, or form, but that Donald Trump got 360 fewer votes according to lunatic, fringy, clown show, cyber ninja fraud it, then the official certified secretary of state hand count showed, right? Uh, and as soon as I said that, they deleted all their comments. I mean, just they, went, they go away. It's like, uh, oh, now we have to find something else to talk to you about. This is like Beth from Pennsylvania. For those of you who have been listening all week, there have been an enormous amount of uh, lunatic, fringy people calling us. And, you know, we let them on when they call as long as they promise not to swear, which is a barrier. It's a hurdle too high for most of them because they're so rage-filled. They can't, uh, you know, they're just raging and raging, and uh, they just want to call up and, and call me an effing something or other or a C word or a B word or something like this. And, uh, you know, we have to tell them uh, we comply with all FCC regulations and we're not allowed to swear on this here show. And uh, they can't promise that they won't lose it. So they don't uh, get on the air. But the ones that can promise that they won't lose it, you know, we obviously let them through. So Beth in Pennsylvania, uh, she called this week to tell us that the Minneapolis, that cities were burning all over America. And how could I say that there was no movement to defund the police? So I showed her how the arsonists were actually right wing, uh, you know, white supremacists, Aryan nation uh, adherents, uh, Aryan cowboys, which is a prison gang, you know, uh, adherents. They were, you know, trying to upend the peaceful pro. And so as soon as we did that, guess what she does? She calls Brett and she goes, okay, so I got that wrong. But now I want to talk about and fill in the blank. 
So that's what happened with the fraud it uh, creatures last night because they didn't even do the most cursory Google search to find that there was a result from this uh, lunatic, fringy, you know, MAGA affiliated money making. I mean, this guy, Doug Logan, he was a conspiracy theorist, right? He, he, his company, Cyber Ninjas, is out of Florida. He had never done an election uh, in his life. He'd never done a recount or a count or had any. Um, experience doing anything regarding any election anywhere, but they actually took in, this is why they did it, $6 million. Yes, they took in $6 million to audit what was already audited twice in Arizona by legitimate election officials in Arizona. And they walked away with $6 million. I mean, that is just amazing. Now, the bottom line is that they had to verify, they went in there to verify their own false beliefs. And they failed to do even that for $6 million. It, this was the best they could do, or the worst that they could do, depending on, you know, which angle you're looking at them from. So maybe now MAGA world can attack the amateur nature of this uh, company. Maybe now they can get on board with us and, uh, you know, at some point uh, say we were right. That would be nice. And stop listening to people who are always, always wrong, which is my point for people who believe the worst that Donald Trump was robbed, that the election was rigged, that America sucks, you can't trust the government, these Secretary of States, they were involved in a cabal, that it's some communist plot or whatever it is. The, 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 the audit by this fraudulent company, they tried their very best to find the very worst, and they couldn't, because there was no bad thing that happened. Now, I will tell you, Donald Trump, uh, I, this is like, have you ever sent out an email and you've already hit send and you want to recall it because you realize either what you said has already been dealt with or what you said was wrong or what you said was, you know, uh, arrogant or what you said was, uh, you know, uh, inappropriate or there was a misspell or, you know, whatever it is, or you included people in the response that you didn't mean, or you included previous emails that shouldn't have been included because you responded to, uh, you know, something that you meant to, uh, you know, copy and paste and then respond, whatever. Well, that's what, that's what Donald Trump did last night. I mean, he lit but he didn't even try to recall it. He didn't even, he doesn't even regret it. He doesn't anything. He, he literally tweeted that Cyber Ninjas was a highly respected auditor and he sent out a statement saying that the result was going to prove, it was going to prove that there was fraud that would have changed the result five or four times over. And he actually sent that out. He actually sent that out. And that explains why people were suddenly bombarding me with wait till tomorrow kind of crap. Because they're listening to the man who is purposefully lying to them so that the Republican Party can take away your access to the next election ballot. I swear to God, it's such an, an audacious, ridiculous, lying sack of crap plot to keep Americans from accessing their ballots, from getting the convenience of mail-in balloting, from the convenience of uh, same-day registration, from the convenience of, uh, you know, uh, showing up, uh, you know, in a drive through to vote or disabled people not having to get out of their cars and getting a ballot at their car or getting a ballot at their home. Honestly, they're just trying to inhibit people from being able to vote. And he keeps on. To, and so it's so it's so disgusting, really. But last night he sent out this statement saying, um, through his Save America PAC, that the auditors were highly respected and that the unselect committee of political haps, hacks dropped their subpoena request the night before Arizona is expected to announce its findings from the forensic audit on voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election scam. This is what they do. This is what they're good at. But everyone will be watching. We watched. You lost. 
again. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Here's some local news from Phoenix. This is fun. A hand recount of all 2.1 million ballots cast in Maricopa County's 2020 vote reaffirmed voters' decision last November. <laughs> Joe Biden was the first Democratic presidential nominee to win the county in 72 years. The draft report of Senate Republicans' election review is a rebuke to the Republican voters and politicians who contended without any evidence that the election was stolen. <laughs> From President Donald Trump, Arizona and Maricopa County taxpayers have spent more than $3.5 million and counting on the review. Six. Outside organizations backing Trump have kicked in at least $7 million. Oh. Senate President Karen Fan authorized the unprecedented election review without a vote of the full Senate. She declined to confirm the result, okay. but she told 12 News in a text message, We will all find out tomorrow in the report. <laughs> there is a lot of information you all need to see. Maricopa County declared victory in a tweet. The candidates certified as the winners did, in fact, win. <laughs> and they're in a state of denial. Uh, Trump is in a state of denial. And you know what he's doing now? You know what he did now? And you know what uh, Governor Greg Abbott is doing now yeah, of Texas? So this is fascinating because I, I know some people in this audience watch Fox News as if it's real. Uh, I watch it the way that uh, our caller this week said his mom, his 86-year-old mom, watches uh, American Family television, radio, right? Uh, the American Family Association's offerings uh, of news uh, as a comedy show, right? I mean, this is why I watch it. I just, I do spit takes sometimes when I see the, the, the white supremacy just spew forth from the TV like that. Uh, if it weren't so dangerous, it would be a parody. It would be, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it would be Stewie. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it would be like uh, uh, South Park or, or some, some parody show, but it isn't. It's, it's literally trying to sway people to believe falsehoods and uh, that they're being replaced uh, by whites, by, by, by non-whites, right? This is, and it's a plan. It's a plot. It's a plot. Uh, I'm sorry your penises didn't work collectively. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you didn't produce a whole lot more white babies. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that you're dying of deaths of despair. I'm also sorry that, you know, a good chunk of you died from a preventable disease because you believed that hydroxychloroquine, you believed that ivermectin, you believed that UV lights uh, were going to, uh, you know, uh, disinfect you. I'm sorry that you're all dying. I really am. I'm sorry that for the first time in the history of the census, uh, Alabama has lost more people than have been born. They literally lost population in Alabama. I mean, that is, that is just wow, I got to say. But I'm sorry that you're dying, and I'm sorry that your penis do doesn't work, and I'm sorry that you're you know, injecting yourself or snorting yourself or shooting yourself or, or eating yourself to death. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's not a plot. You're making choices that are killing you. But anyway, I was watching The Fox, because I watch it, and... They have been trashing. This is amazing. I mean, Tucker has been interviewing primary challengers to Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who's about as Trumpy as you would think any sane person would let Texas get. Ken Paxton is like an indicted uh, criminal, and he's your attorney general. Your governor is like, uh, you know, screaming and yelling that you should die so that, you know, apparently Joe Biden can fail or some such crap. Anyway, they have been on Fox News trashing Greg Abbott, like repeatedly, day after day, this last week. And I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, what is the dealio? What is the dealio? Well, now I get it. Now I know. Eight and a half hours after former President Donald Trump made a public demand for Governor Greg Abbott of Texas to back legislation to recount Texas, to do a forensic audit of Texas of the 2020, swear to God, this is how insane Donald Trump is and has always been. This is almost a year now, post-election, almost a year, and he literally wants a state that he handily won. 
He won Texas by five percentage points. Okay, that's a win. That's a W. That's a win. That counts. That is a big state with a lot of electoral uh, college votes. And he won it. But eight and a half hours after he told Greg Abbott to uh, sign legislation to create a forensic audit of the 2020 election, the Texas Secretary of State's office announced that Texas will have a, quote, comprehensive forensic audit of the results in four of the state's largest counties. Dallas County, Tarrant County, that's uh, all of Dallas and Fort Worth. Tarrant is Fort Worth, uh, Dallas is Dallas. Uh, Harris County, which is Houston, and Collin County, which is outside of Dallas. That's Plano, uh, McKinney County, you know, uh, the town of McKinney. I used to live there. I, I, I know your area, okay? Collin, of these three, actually voted for Donald Trump, and they wanted to do a forensic aud- audit of, of Plano and McKinney and Collin County, included in these other counties which didn't vote for Donald Trump. I mean, this is just so sick. And Abbott actually says, oh, Eight and a half hours after Donald Trump demands that he recount these four counties in Texas, Abbott says, yeah, now I understand why all week Fox is trashing Abbott. Because they need to keep the big lie alive. And so he's going to red states that he won. So how how much, I mean, get get an egg timer, everybody, because you never have one when you need one. But Florida is probably next because... You know, death sentence doesn't even have to be threatened, I don't think, to do an audit of Broward. Broward! Which is Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Miami-Dade. Do you know what I'm saying? He he doesn't even have to be threatened on Fox News. Oh, my God, how sick and twisted is this? All because he needs to keep the big lie living. He needs to keep it alive. It's all he's got. This is just so unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, it was a year ago yesterday. This is the crazy part. A year ago yesterday, when a reporter who, um, he used to report for Playboy. He was, uh, Brian Cream. you know who he is. Brian Cream doesn't take anybody's crap. Brian Cream always asks questions about, like, uh, you know, when are you going to, you know, uh, talk about the testing situation in the Rose Garden meetings? Brian Cream, a year ago yesterday, to the day, asked Donald Trump if he would guarantee a peaceful transfer of power. And he wouldn't. Donald Trump would not say that he said the ballots are fraudulent, the ballots are messed up, and the Democrats know it. Everybody knows. And now we know why he was thinking that. Now we know why he was saying that he wouldn't do a peaceful transfer of power. It's because he had already planned five different ways, five different ways to steal the election. You know, Howard used to say the only reason why he won't accept that he lost the election is because he rigged it so hard. And he knows that he did. And I used to say, I don't know. I don't know. And now I know. Right on, Howard. Every now and then he is dead right. Every now and then. (laughs) Well, you know, when I actually put his predictions on the air, it's because he got them right. That's that's how I sort through it. (laughs) But he was right. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? And there has been rioting in Louisville. There's been rioting in many cities across this country. Red and your so-called red and blue states. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I understand that, but people are rioting. Do you commit to making sure that there's a peaceful transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very transfer. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. (gasps) Uh, The ballots are out of control. You know it. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. What a freaking liar. What a, what, what a, what a, what a, a con man. I, I want to use a strong word, but I can't. I can't. Anyway, uh, so you've paid $6 million to this uh, ridiculous company to do a ridiculous sham of a fraud it, uh, that produced the worst result they could, which is Biden won, and he won by more votes 
Then the previous hand recount said that Biden won by, which is just terrible. And, um, you know, Karen Fan, who is the president of your Senate there in Arizona, literally without a vote from the legislature, allowed cyber ninjas to come in there and uh, finger your ballots. Now, you do know that the, 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 the handling of the ballots in a non-secure way is a violation of federal law. You understand that? So somebody's going to have to pay for this. Somebody is. Somebody is. Something tells me, though, it will be Arizona taxpayers. But, uh, you know, Donald Trump isn't done. He just issued another statement. Uh, He said, without evidence again, uh, that the ballot review uncovered, quote, a major criminal event and should be investigated by the attorney general immediately. (laughs) The man is is he's a wackadoo. Okay, he's a he's a lunatic. He's a nut job. He's in he's he's insane. You understand? He's not right. He's not right. He's been wrong about everything from testing to PPE to stockpiles to uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine to to I mean, the man has not gotten anything right at all ever. That if he didn't inherit a large sum of cash from his daddy, you wouldn't even know who he is. And this is your touchstone. So, you know, five Republicans in Maricopa County, uh, seven elected officials, seven election officials, uh, elected officials, sorry, seven of them, including five Republicans, decided today to demand that the, 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 the Senate actually, uh, you know, realizes that this was a con and a sham and that it imperiled our democracy. They wrote a letter to the Senate President Karen Fan, and the Justice Department has also sent a letter to her saying that you are in violation of federal law. Federal law requires that ballots be securely maintained for 22 months following a federal election. Uh, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors chairman, who happens to be a Republican, Jack Sellers, said in a statement that the findings mean, quote, the tabulation equipment counted the ballots as they were designed to do, and the results reflect the will of the voters. That should be the end of this story. Everything else is just noise. He added, quote, board members told the truth in the face of angry phone calls and emails fueled by a coordinated campaign to shake America's faith in the power of their vote. Will they accept the truth now, question mark? So the federal government, the House Oversight Committee, which is investigating the whole shenanigans, the whole con, the whole fraud, the whole... Uh, lunatic nature of the Senate president giving money to a Florida firm that had no, no, no experience in administering an election or a recount and whose chief executive, Doug Logan, publicly embraced Trump's theory of fraud in Arizona and in the election generally. The House Oversight Committee has been investigating this, and they sent a letter to Doug Logan today requesting his testimony at the October 7th hearing to look into what the hell went on in Arizona, uh, what Karen Fan uh, relied on in order to violate federal law and allow for this uh, you know, ridiculous con game to play itself out with money appropriated to them by her as the president of the Arizona Senate. And the letter says this. It says, this request follows your repeated refusal to produce documents requested by the committee regarding this largely privately funded audit. This was written by Carolyn uh, Maloney of New York and the constitutional scholar Jamie Raskin of Maryland. And he really is. He's a, a constitutional professor. He wrote, as a result of your obstruction, your participation in a committee hearing is necessary for the committee to advance the investigation of the questionable audit your company performed and to examine whether this audit is interfering with Americans' right to vote free from partisan interference. Uh, Senator Wendy Rogers, who serves in the Arizona Senate, 
tweeted Thursday night that she had just spoken to uh, Doug Logan by phone, and Doug Logan had told her that it was simply a draft. It's only a partial report, and that the final hearing, quote, will render findings of great consequence. Now, this particular member of the Arizona Senate has called for Biden to be decertified as the winner because she says God is now in control. Please pray for our audit team tomorrow as they present their findings. Uh, somebody's got to pay for this um, dis- dis- destruction of the truth. Somebody's got to answer to the federal uh, violation of not keeping your ballots secure for 22 months post a federal election. Somebody's got to answer to the appropriation of tax dollars to this crazy, creepy company. Somebody has to actually ask questions about how this all happened. What was the purpose? Why did Karen Fan uh, say that this was necessary or needed? And don't tell me it was to take away any doubt from the voters' mind because no one had any doubt. Only Donald Trump and some creatures out there. And now it's, it's bleeding into states he won. He actually is, is threatening on Fox News, through Fox News, uh, to primary Greg Abbott if Greg Abbott doesn't order some sort of a, uh, an audit of Texas that he won. He won Texas. Uh, and Greg Abbott, eight and a half hours later, says, okay. Now, you know what's interesting? Texas doesn't have the Secretary of State currently. Your Secretary of State in Texas resigned. In May, Ruth Ruggiero Hughes and uh, Greg Abbott hasn't appointed her successor. So you don't have a secretary of state. Now, you also know that Wisconsin, uh, a former MAGA Supreme Court justice, he wants an investigation into Wisconsin and uh, he wants an audit of Wisconsin's ballots a year after the election. And Pennsylvania, as you know, they want all kinds of voter information. They want driver's license numbers. They want addresses. They want partial social security numbers. And they want info about how you voted. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Oh, we're going to have a wonderful time trying to vote next year. Uh, Yes, because Jim Crow is still with us. It is still here. Voter suppression, that is the point of all of these fraud. Voter suppression is the point of all of the big lie that has been and will repeatedly be told. It's to make you advocate for making it harder for you to vote. And if you're doing that, please give it up now, please. It's such a con. It's such a sham. And it's so dangerous. It's so, you saw how dangerous it gets. So today is the last day, last day of the Free Speech TV Fall Pledge Drive. We are here to tell you that all this stuff that we tell you is recorded, you know. It's actually on videotape and such. And you can go and check and see who's getting it right and who is constantly wrong. And that's important when you select your source for your information because information will set you free. Information is the coin of the realm. Information is what keeps intact your constitutionally given rights as an American. And that's why we work so hard to give you information that is reliable, that will be demonstrably true in the end. And if that's important to you, and you love having proper sources, good information, things you can point to and show people and say, look, this channel here, they called it, they got it right. They've been right every single time. They get, if they get something wrong, they say so. And they don't tell you what to do with the information. They tell you to make up your own mind, but make up your own mind based on what is true. If that's important to you, when you vote, instead of voting out of rage and anger ginned up by a con man, then please do support this here channel this station, this enterprise. This is totally viewer supported. We don't take any corporate money. We don't take any political dollars either. We only rely on your generosity and your support. That's it. 
That's how we stay on the air. And we've been on the air for 25 years. 25. It's a long track record. Uh, if you can, please do visit us at freespeech.org today. If you like the old-fashioned way, please use the telephone, 877-378-8669. It's right there on your screen. And if you like texting, and who doesn't love a good text, then just text to 44321, 44321, FSTV, Free Speech TV, FSTV, and we'll send you a secure link. You can go ahead and donate, and you will see the results of the fall pledge drive on that particular app. It's convenient. It's easy. People liked it. This was the first time we used it, and people really, really liked it. So uh, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you so much for your support, this particular uh, pledge drive. It's been awesome. Thank you again. And if you couldn't, don't worry. We're just grateful that you watch. So thank you. Anthony in Houston. Hi. Um, Randy. First time, long time. Oh, first time, long time. <laughs> yeah, um, it's my birthday. and It's your birthday. birthday. Today, she's in my birthday, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, every birthday, I try to do something daring, like talking to one of my heroes. And I must say, for the last 20 years, Oh, you have been instrumental. And... Oh, that is so nice that you're you're giving God on your birthday. You want to give me a present of praise. Thank you. Let's all walk. <laughs> let's let's take Anthony into the gratuitous hall of praise right now. Happy birthday, Anthony! <laughs> Yay, Anthony! Thank you. Thank you. Yay! You survived another year. Yay! Oh! <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, speaking of surviving, uh, with this whole COVID-19 um, virus and the Republicans, you know, I also believe that um, some of them are actually willing to just lay down their lives. They know, they know what they know how to wear a mask. They know they get vaccinated. They know to do all the things that they need to do to get rid of the virus. But in order to make this president look bad, I truly believe that they are willing to lay down their lives. Oh, it's yeah, not- there's no question. And, and you know, the Republican leadership, who should be advising people, you know, mm-hmm. in, in a full-throated way to go get vaccinated or at least mask up or at least social distance or whatever, or protect your own children. You know, if you believe in life, you would want to protect your children now, wouldn't you? And the best way to do that is to cocoon them with nobody that is, uh, you know, just with people who are uh, vaccinated, uh, people who are masked or whatever. They won't do it. And and you're right, but the leadership is what's causing it. And the leadership is right. is literally trying to make Joe Biden fail uh, by letting people die. And that is the sickest, saddest uh, Republican position in all of the Republican positions ever taken. Uh, that has got to be the most brutal, cynical, uh, violent, horrible position in the history of the Republican Party. And they've, been, right. and they've been for some deadly things, you know. They've been for, you know, really horrific, uh, you know, uh, uh, tax cuts for corporate, you know, transferring wealth from people who are hanging on by a fingernail, uh, you know, allowing banks to over appraise their houses to get them to borrow against it and then crashing the market, leaving people homeless, ignoring homelessness, ignoring the uh, big, you know, the, the Purdue Pharma uh, pandemic of, of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, drug abuse. And then that led to heroin. And I mean, you know, uh, their policies always fail. They always do. But this is so True. in your face. This is so, hey, you have to die to make Joe Biden look bad. Really? It's so, yeah. it's so ugly. It's just ugly. Right. You know, if, it, if it's just to make, um, again, to make him look bad, but also just to become specific. Um, but they do it. They do it regularly. I mean, they've done it. They need an enemy all the time. Last election, it was, uh, you know, brown people immigrating from Central America, uh, then, you know, before that, it was redlining and, you know, uh, the welfare queen. It's always been racial. Race, racism works really well for them. Uh, I'm Absolutely. sure this year, you know, the pictures from the border, that's doing it for them right now. They're probably, you know, touching themselves on Zoom calls. 
like, uh, you know, uh, like Jeffrey Tubin, which I now spell differently than he does. Tube. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then they hired him back. I don't understand. But anyway, um, so this one, though, is like die for the dear leader. This this thing that's been going on for almost 18 months now is really, really, really the worst of the worst. Uh, I've never seen anything like this where they're telling people to die. Yeah, uh, and they just want to keep it going. They want to keep it going. Yeah. Uh, well, that's I, the only I, I know what I'm getting it. you for your birthday. I'm going to get you a new phone because yours is bad. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm on my um, iPod, so um, probably oh, a new a... iPod is the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, listen, <laughs> I don't know. How old are you? Do you want to say or no? Or Yeah, uh, today I am 39. 39. Oh, that's a good age. You got so many good <laughs> years ahead of you, my friend. Oh, keep yourself safe. Um, keep yourself well. Yes. And uh, yes, happy, yes. happy, happy 39th. Happy birthday. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Oh, it was his birthday. Dan in Alabama. Hi, Randy. Hi, Dan. Uh, first of all, I happen to be a Vietnam veteran, but I I simply want to say to you, thank you for your service because you're an Air Force veteran. And yeah, but mine, mine was little. Mine was, mine was this. Well, little. so was I. But yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you you had a war, and you took your chances. I didn't have a war, and I took my chances. <laughs> it was it was pretty? Well, I wanted it was different. I wanted to I wanted to relate something that happened recently here in Alabama. Uh, I am a Democrat. I'm proud of that. Oh, awesome! Uh, but I I do wear a Vietnam veterans hat when I go out, and I had three guys come up to me. Normally, the hat attracts people that are Vietnam veterans, that kind of thing. But I got three Republicans who are on the Republican committee here locally, and they came up to me, and I really didn't get a word in edgewise, you know. Uh, I see that you're a veteran. You're in the Marine Corps. We're proud of you, and I know you're a Trump man, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ah, et cetera yes. which, I, which I am not. Well, Believe you know, me. you know that old expression when you assume you make an ass of you and me, right? I know. Indeed. I, whenever I say, you know, that I'm a veteran, people always assume I'm a Republican, and I have no earthly idea why. Because you, Dan, and me both know that when you're in the service, they teach you that the weakest among you can get you killed. So you have an obligation to train someone up as best you can to reach down and get them to perform at their highest level, and that is classic liberalism. Right? You give somebody the tools they need to succeed. You give them uh, the help that they need to succeed. Because if they don't succeed, they're going to be a drag on your unit. So I don't know why people assume that you and me, by virtue of our service, support a lying sack of crap who's trying to undo democracy. But thank you for being a Marine. Semper Fi, dude. Slash donate. <laughs> Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. Wow. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent Jose that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. The select committee said no one would be off limits, and now they have issued their very first subpoenas to some of former President Donald Trump's closest advisors. On this list, take a look. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, former Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Scavino, former Defense Department official Cash Patel, and longtime Trump advisor Steve Bannon. The committee is demanding that those four men turn over documents and appear behind closed doors to testify in October. All of this intended to gain insight into Trump's mind set in the days leading up to January 6th and as the violence unfolded that day. Congressman Adam Schiff says that they will use the Justice Department if necessary to enforce these subpoenas, but Trump is already vowing to fight this. And this does mark a significant turning point in the congressional investigation into January 6th. And lawmakers leading this committee say they are just getting started. Thank God. Thank God. All right, so subpoenas went out last night uh, to people you know. Steve Bannon, who has absolutely no ability to claim executive privilege because he left the White House 
way, way before January 6th and uh, continued his broadcast career uh, shouting at the rain that we should not accept the result of the election and uh, talking to Donald Trump, you know, the night before at the Willard Hotel and telling him, keep fighting, don't uh, give in, don't accept the results, you know, this kind of thing. So he got a subpoena and uh, there can be no claim of executive privilege there. Cash Patel. You may be sitting there scratching your head and other various body parts saying, why do I know that name? Why do I know that name? Because Cash Patel came right out of Devin Nunes's office. Remember Devin Nunes with the fake, oh, they spied on the Trump campaign claim, which has been laid to rest 80,000 ways to Sunday. Uh, just, uh, you know, the Durham report was supposed to tell us who spied on the Trump campaign, and it was going to indict the spies. It was going to determine the origin of the Russia investigation. Uh, it's over. It's done. And there's nothing there. Nothing to see. Move along, move along. I think he indicted uh, a lawyer at uh, Perkins Coie. And you may be saying, why do I know Perkins Coie? Because uh, Perkins Coie is Hillary Clinton's law firm, which everybody knows. And they indicted uh, a guy named Sussman who worked for Perkins Coie, who went to the FBI six months after the Russia investigation had been opened and said, you might want to investigate uh, a server that we hear Donald Trump may have in his offices that's tied to the Alpha Bank in Moscow. Turned out that that was not a credible report. It wasn't a fact. It wasn't something that ever produced a result. But they've indicted him not because he gave a tip that turned out not to be anything to the FBI. You can't arrest somebody for that. You can't indict somebody for that. And you can't prosecute somebody for that. No, they decided, Durham did, because he didn't want to leave empty-handed, you know. So Durham decided that he was going to indict Mr. Sussman because Mr. Sussman was not clear to him that he worked for Perkins Coey? Are you freaking kidding me? That's what he came up with. All this time, all this money, Bill Barr appoints a special prosecutor, an attorney, a U.S. attorney from the state of Connecticut to find out the origins of the Russia investigation. And it turns out that the origins of the Russia investigation are exactly what the origins of the Russia investigation indicated in the Mueller report were. And that is that Papadopoulos was talking to Mr. Professor Misfood, drunk, and saying that there were Russian contacts with the Trump campaign. And that's how it happened. So Cash Patel was working for Devin Nunes as a staffer in Devin Nunes's office. And Devin Nunes was the person that ran over to the White House. They're spying on you. They're spying on you. Hence Durham, who found, no, nobody was spying on you. So Cash Patel was moved over to the Pentagon at the very end of the Trump administration. And apparently Cash Patel was put there to organize some sort of a... Um, military response if Donald Trump actually used the Insurrection Act to mobilize the United States military against Americans. So that's why Kash Patel, uh, he was serving as chief of staff of the acting Secretary of Defense that day, uh, that Chris Wright dude, okay? Uh, and so he's been subpoenaed. Mark Meadows, obviously the chief of staff to the White House, uh, you know, to, uh, Donald Trump's chief of staff, and his deputy, Dan Scavino, to see what the media strategy before January 6th actually was. So these subpoenas were announced last night as well, and they will have to go and testify uh, mid-October, but it won't be exciting for you or me because this will be behind closed doors, uh, so we won't get to hear their testimony. Now, they could fight the subpoena, as you know, because I uh, remember Don McGahn, who was the former chief of staff to uh, Donald Trump, he fought his subpoena, and in the end he had to testify, remember? But he also testified behind closed doors, and we didn't get to see his testimony, but it produced nothing that uh, you know played to Donald Trump's 
spy campaign or, or anything that he asserted, right? But uh, this is about January 6th. This is about who organized the insurrection. What was going on inside the White House during the insurrection? Was Donald Trump, you know, um, promoting the insurrection uh, through a media strategy that Dan Scavino uh, launched? Was Bannon part of that? Uh, Cash Patel, was he put over at the Pentagon uh, to manage the Insurrection Act? Should it be deployed against American people? You know what I mean? So that happened last night. This is all real important. Now, if they fight their subpoenas, remember we have a different attorney general. Last time we had Bill Barr. And Bill Barr refused, refused to prosecute contempt of Congress. He refused. He just uh, kicked the can down the road and let the clock go, and blah, 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 and let Don McGahn go to court privately and whatever. And Don McGahn, of course, lost because you can't defy a congressional subpoena legally. But now we have a different attorney general. Now we have Merrick Garland. And I, I suspect that as moderate, and he is, uh, as Merrick Garland is, that Merrick Garland would prosecute contempt of Congress if people overtly violated a subpoena to appear or produce documents. I just think that he would. But that's just a thought. That's just my opinion of what Merrick Garland, who is a letter of the law guy, would do with a contempt citation sent to the Department of Justice, which is where it would go if they fail to appear. The other question would be executive privilege. Well, this you could take to the bank. Someone who isn't president of the United States, and we all know we only have one president at a time, doesn't have executive privilege. That means Donald Trump doesn't have executive privilege because Donald Trump isn't the president. Joe Biden is something that was doubly confirmed today with the fraud it results in Arizona. Not that anything that they could have given us would have done anything different to the results of the election. But they couldn't find any, they scrounged and they looked and they violated federal law in order to do it. Uh, and still they couldn't say anything different than the Secretary of State certified happened in Arizona almost a year ago. So what I'm hearing is that Joe Biden, the President of the United States currently, isn't going to exert any executive privilege, which he has the right to do, over any Trump documents, over any Trump White House materials. And he is going to allow for the select committee to have everything. Everything. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Days before the insurrection that Steve Bannon and Trump were discussing, quote, this is a quote, killing the Biden presidency in the crib, end quote. And Costa uh, described the mood in the White House the night before the attack. Here it is. On January 5th, the eve of the insurrection, the riot at the Capitol, we have the scene of President Trump not only pressuring Vice President Pence in the Oval Office, but then opening the door to have the cold air come into the Oval Office, talking to his aides, saying, can you hear my supporters outside, talking mm -hmm. to these people as he hears them out in the streets on a cold, almost freezing night, hours before the rally that ultimately led to the riot. What does that reveal to you, you think, about what the Trump administration wanted to have happen? Well, clearly, uh, they wanted to pressure the vice president to ignore his constitutional duties uh, and essentially decertify the election or turn away the legitimate electors from a particular state and throw us into a constitutional crisis. Mm. Uh, and the president was using threatening means, whatever means he could. Uh, and uh, the following day, we saw really the, the ultimate step meant to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power. And that was a violent attack on the Congress and the Capitol. So uh, the former president was willing to use any means, I think, including the violence we saw January 6th, to overcome the will of the people and stay in power. That is so disgusting and dangerous. 
and anti-democratic and uh, something other than uh, what a republic, a, a democratic republic ought to tolerate. And, and we need to actually find out once and for all through testimony and documents who organized this and, 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 and who paid for it and, and how in the world do, 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 do we put an end to the big lie? Uh, how in the world do we put an end to a demagogue ever having this kind of power in the United States ever again? What steps are needed here? certainly isn't voter suppression, which is the Republican next move, right? You have an insurrection. You have violence. They kn Listen, you know and I know what was being said because we have it being said on videotape. We have it said by, you know, uh, 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 Paul Gosar. We have it said by uh, the Eastman attorney at the rally. We have uh, Roger Stone. We have Steve Bannon on his stupid show. Riling up uh, violence, ginning up violence, telling people, you know, uh, take back your country. You're the real American. Over and over, and that, saying the election was rigged, the election was stolen, uh, Donald Trump won. Donald Trump is saying Donald Trump won. He said, I won. It's phony lockboxes. He goes on TV. He tells anybody who will listen, you know, to do I it. got 75 million votes, which is more than any sitting president ever got. I won the election, but they cheated. Oh, my God. And by the way, Facebook and Zuckerberg with a $500 million worth of phony lockboxes that he put on, some of them had 96% Biden votes in them, 96%. They were like just dumping ballots. It was a phony deal. He has no idea what he's talking about, and neither do you. Because he's making crap up, uh, like on the TV. He's sitting there. He did so much TV. It was just so sick, you know? I, I, I won this election by hundreds of thousands of votes. There's no way I lost Georgia. There's no way. We won by hundreds of thousands of votes. I'm just going by s small numbers. When you add them up, they're many times the 11,000. But, but I won that state by hundreds of thousands of votes. Now, do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also Dominion. that Dominion took out machines. Uh, that Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. This is Ryan Germany. No, Dominion is not um, moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having well, but, no, but, an but have they moved? Have they? Have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. <laughs> you sure, Ryan? I'm sure. I'm sure, Mr. President. Oh, my God. Actually calling secretaries of state, uh, actually telling them to find them, uh, find his, his, his 11,000, just one more than Joe Biden got. Uh, isn't it true? The rumor on the street, the rumor on the street. You have a president of the United States who's literally shaking down secretaries of state to rig elections on his behalf based on w rumors, rumors. You know who's putting this, uh, th this rumor in his ear? Rudy Giuliani, uh, Lynn Wood. Uh, Sidney Powell, I, these people are all facing, you know, uh, the courts of law, that, that disbarment, fines, defamation lawsuits, bi a billion dollar defamation lawsuit from Dominion. And they're telling this to the president of the United States. And, and that president, that man who had all that power, all that power to the point where the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, literally has to call uh, the war room generals and say, you know, if this man gets desperate enough, we have to intervene before he launches a nuclear war. And the process for launching a nuclear war includes us. And we have to make sure that we're included in the meeting we're entitled to by law in the situation room prior to any nuclear launch. It's in the law. We need to be there. And then he uses the deconfliction line and calls not just China, but calls our allies too and says, listen, I think it's under control. We got this. You know, America's just going through some, uh, you know, machinations right now. The president is saying, you know, a lot of crap and people are riled up, but we're not going to launch. We're not going to launch. We're not going to launch. We got this. We got this. Can you imagine if we had a different type of person 
as the joint chiefs or if we had different war room generals or if we i mean come on do, how close to mutually assured destruction does one have to get before one realizes there's a problem with just any schmuck being able to be president of the United States? How much violence are you going to tolerate? How much destruction of the Constitution can you sit by and watch? And this was a shredding of our democratic, uh, you know, our right to vote, our right to have our votes counted freely and fairly. I mean, it's unbelievable. And the Republican Party decided, well, something good is going to come out of all this. And what that good is for us is a suppression and subversion of the next vote. This is our time. Let's make our move. Let's write into the law that if we don't like the result, our red state legislature can overturn it because that was the hitch in the get along last time. People were following the law and the law didn't allow for them to overturn the results of the election. The law didn't allow for them to undo the will of the people. Let's make it the law so that next time they can. They'll have the legal permission, the legal standing. You know that's happened. You know it has. We have to pass voter, federal voter laws in this country as a floor under which no state can sink. And that means taking away the ability for any state legislature to undo the will of the people. That's something they can legislate in the federal government. Clear. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. All right, everybody, this is it. This is it. This is the last pitch for the Free Speech TV Fall Pledge Drive. Last pitch. Last time. Promise. Uh, you know, maybe if you gave, I would give you the words to uh, don't give up. Everybody always writes me. Don't you get that too? They call me all the time. All the time. I don't want to get on air. What are the lyrics to what that? What are the lyrics to that? Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll give it to you. Don't give up. And then it's supposed to say on, but I edited it. See, that's why you're confused. Don't give up on what is true. On what is true. So it really says don't give up what is true. Because I edited it to make it 10 seconds, which it has to be. So there you have my uh, daily uh, dilemma. Anyway, those are the words. And now that I've given it to you, please make a donation at freespeech.org. Thank you. You can call 877-378-8669. Talk to a real human being. We love to talk to you. And uh, you can text it if you like. Just 44321 is the number. Dial and then text FSTV to 44321. We'll send you a secure link and you can donate that way. Thank you very much. This concludes the Randy Rhodes portion of the Free Speech TV Fall Pledge Drive. Oh! Yeah, we did it. All right, Sandy at Delray Beach. Yes, hi, Randy. I love, 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 love you. I've been listening to you uh, on and off for over 20 years. Um, anyway, I have a question. Uh, How do I look so I fabulous? Just... I don't know. It's just uh, jeans. I'm, I'm sorry? Oh, I thought your question was, how do I look so fabulous after 20 years? <laughs> I mean, really, you've taught me so much. I have learned so much about our government, our country, and everything over the years. And I was so naive. I can't tell you. And you've been right about everything you've ever said. I, I mean know. it. <laughs> anyway, my question is, um, why hasn't the Southern um, District of New York charged, or, ha ha or why hasn't Trump been arrested yet? I, I mean, it's well over a year. What has taken him? He's done a thousand things illegal. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, deranged, crazy, everything else you said just before. Well, you can't be arrested for being mentally ill, unless, of course, you're poor in this country. Well, he said, and, and then you can, <laughs> as we know. He's done so many things that are illegal. I know. Well, we're waiting for a grand jury, okay? We've got uh, Weisselberg, and we've got, uh, you know, uh, three million reasons for Weisselberg to, you know, turn on him. There's another guy that worked inside of the Trump organization who just gave testimony. It's a slow process, Justice, as you know. 
as you know, nothing ever, ever happened. I mean, look how long it took to get Don McGahn's testimony after he was subpoenaed. It took almost four years to get his testimony. This is what happens when the person that you seek to bring justice uh, to bear upon has money. Doesn't work for people who are sitting on Rikers Island who haven't even made it to trial because it takes so long. But they're locked up, right? They're locked up in roach-infested quarters with feces and urine on the floor, and right, uh, right? and and and, mm -hmm. we, and we say, oh, those poor corrections officers. You know, they 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 have to you know uh, deal with these guys who haven't been convicted of any crime who are living in 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 mung and and crap and feces. They have to deal with their uh, bad attitude. I mean, it's all it's all baked into the system but, that is rigged. But if they can continue to appeal and appeal and appeal, when does this end? This right. man should be taken off the streets. He is a danger to our society. Yeah, he, he's a dangerous person. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, his own family has told us this. His own niece has written books about it. Uh, he's now suing her. Right. Right. I mean, the man is is relentless and he's deranged and he's dangerous. And there's no question that he has done more damage than uh, any of these uh, protesters who are also jailed right now for violating, uh, you know, uh, a restricted uh, space for hunting the House of Representatives speaker for hunting the vice president with an eye on hanging them. So. You know, it's all about money. It truly is. It's about, you know, how much can you afford to uh, defend yourself in this rigged system of justice? That's why he hasn't been well, arrested yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Unfair. Intolerable. Uh, yeah, I thought I was being patient with this man, but... Um... Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> we're being very patient, waiting for the wheels of justice to slowly grind. But, yeah, it, it's, it's all a question of, you know, money. It's, I actually it's, really like that call because, Randy, that's the carrot I dangled in front of my friends to get him to vote. Hey, don't you want to see him go to jail? Huh. We vote him out. He could go to jail. He really will go to jail. Just just go vote. That was the carrot I dangled. And I'm kind of in Sandy's boat. Like, when's this going to get going? So I have a, a you know, I, I answer my emails every night. It's a long process. I get a lot of them, but I do answer them. And if you've written me, you know that I do. So there's a guy, uh, Mike. He, he's from the San Francisco Bay Area. And Mike just asked me the same thing a couple nights ago. He said, you got to give me your proof. How do you know he's going to die in jail? And I just texted, I texted, I, I emailed him back one word, but it had a hyperlink to an article. And the word was Weisselberg. And the article that I attached in the hyperlink was an article about how Weisselberg has three million reasons to turn on Trump. So... You know, listen, it's a slow process. Everybody's talking about this girl, okay, this uh, girl who disappeared in the Teton Mountains, and then they found her dead corpse, uh, and they did an autopsy, the cause of death, this homicide, and his, you know, the, her her boyfriend, Laundry, that's his name, Laundry. I keep saying, take out the laundry, take out the laundry. Why don't we not take out the laundry? Anyway, uh, they finally today issued an arrest warrant for him. Now, that's slow, when you consider that he came home in her freaking van without her, what, a month ago, two months ago, and his parents, where they both lived, saw him come home without his girlfriend, who he left with on a four-month, hey, let's see America, big van life or some crap, you know, let's go do the van thing, and... Uh, his parents protected him, wouldn't let him talk to the police about what happened to her, and then he disappears. And they just issued an arrest warrant for him today. The insurrectionists who stormed the Capitol, I refer to that day as white boy day, why? Because if those people who stormed the Capitol would have been, oh, I don't know, black Haitians, I think they would all be dead right now. Just, that's an opinion. I think if they were brown people of any shade, they'd all be dead right now. 
That's just an opinion. But they weren't. They were white boys. They were white guys with tactical gear and walkie-talkies and baseball bats and flagpoles and radios communicating with each other, lined up in uh, military formations with a gallows set up outside. And they, only one of them was killed by a capital, by, by, by a, um, yeah, he was a capital police officer inside the house. Just one. That would have been a bloodbath if those people were not white. Fatality. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Who knew what, when? Who was talking to coordinators of the protests? Did you talk to the former president that day? I've talked to the former president umpteen times, thousands. I mean, I may not thousands I mean, on times, January but countless, countless times. I talked to the president. I never talk about what we talk about because I just don't think that's appropriate. Just like I don't talk about what happens in Republican conferences. So sure. I've talked to the president numerous times. Uh, I continue to talk to the president no, no, since he's left office. No, I mean on office. January 6th, Congressman. Yes, uh, I mean, I've talked to the president. Uh, I've talked to the president so many. I can't remember all the days I've talked to him, but I've certainly talked to the president. Yeah. And, and on that day was... Uh, can you share any of the insight of, of what he was thinking about that day? Uh, Brett, the people we need to come testify are the people who can testify to the fundamental questions. Why didn't the United States Capitol, the People's House, have an appropriate security posture on that day? And what have we done? Those are the people we need to hear from. Yeah. Those are, that, that's the information and testimony we need to get. Why wasn't he subpoenaed? Why wasn't Jim G G G Y M? Why wasn't Jim Jordan subpoenaed? Marjorie Taylor Greene not subpoenaed. Uh, it's just so interesting. Lauren Boebert not subpoenaed. Jim Jordan he's got a, he's got an issue here. There's some confusion over what you told Brett Baer on Fox News on Tuesday night, so I want to clear it up. First off, yes or no? Did you speak with President Trump on January sixth? Yeah, I mean, I speak. I, I spoke with the president last week. I speak with the president all the time. I spoke with him on January 6th. I mean, I talk with President Trump all the time. And that's that's I don't think that's unusual. Uh, I would expect members of Congress to talk with the president of the United States when they're trying to get done the things they told the voters in their district to do. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of amazed sometimes that people keep asking this. But of course, I talk to the president all the time. I talked to him, like I said, I talked to him last week. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, <laughs> during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go. I, 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 I spoke with him that day after, I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, I just don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, th that when, when those conversations happened, but, um, but uh, what I know is I spoke with him all the time. But, but Taylor, the, the key here is the people we need to speak to. The people we need to talk to are the ones who can answer the question, why wasn't there a better security presence that day? <laughs> He's so screwed. And I, and, and I tell you, you know, they have to subpoena him, too. Uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, roundup of people that's still not happened. And I know it's frustrating, but we haven't even gotten to the hearings yet that need to take place on Capitol Hill. All that's happened so far is four subpoenas were issued by the select committee uh, that was set up. And, you know, Liz, Liz Cheney is on it. Uh, Adam Kinzinger is on it. And they're Republicans. So the bipartisan select committee that had to uh, happen in the House simply because the Republicans refused with their votes, refused to set up an independent outside investigation into the entirety of January 6th. Everything from the security of the Capitol to what led to it, to anybody's participation in it, to the reaction inside the White House on that day. They said no. They didn't want anybody to investigate an attack on our Capitol that has not happened in this country since the British did it. You know what I'm saying? I, they don't want the investigation. So we had to actually use our majority in the House to set up a select committee to do this work. And they're just beginning to do this work now because, hey, everybody was on vacation. It was August. They were on recess. And now they're back and they have 
the select committee sending out subpoenas, telling people they want documents from the White House, the White House agreeing today they will not exert executive privilege on behalf of Donald Trump. They will not deprive the select committee of the documents that it requires in order to do its investigation about January 6th. Biden has said uh, it would be a disservice to the nation. He literally considers this one of the dis- most disgusting black marks on American democracy in the history of this country, the insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. And he is not going to protect Donald Trump, but it's just now starting as far as the criminal charges that SDNY uh, are, are, are involved in. There's still a sitting grand jury. They're still taking testimony. There's still a million pages of documents. There's still, you know, a, an inordinate amount of uh, investigation and, and no indictments yet because they haven't made their final plea to the grand jury to issue indictments. So, you know. Jim Jordan is a congressman, and that is why he's not been subpoenaed yet. Lauren Boebert is a congresswoman, and that's why she's not been subpoenaed yet. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she just got into a fight today. I don't know if you saw this or not. She got into a fight with Debbie Dingell. Who, Debbie Dingell is one of the most straight down the middle, moderate, uh, you know, generous human beings. She does happen to be a Democrat. But she's not, uh, you know, uh, like me. Uh, she's not. She's not like a progressive or anything. She's just a. Mo- and they got into a shouting match on the Capitol steps because Marjorie Taylor Greene lost a vote today. You know, today uh, the House of Representatives passed the Women's Health Protection Act. They codified Roe v. Wade into law. Now, only know, God only knows what the future of it is in the crazy, crazy filibustery Senate. And why constitutionally protected rights are subject to the filibuster rule, I don't know. But I keep on telling you, I will not be happy until there's a carve out for civil rights being subject to the filibuster. Like voting rights should not be subject to a filibuster ever. You don't get a tyrannical minority weighing in on whether or not we get the right to vote. Sorry. And you don't get a tyrannical minority weighing in on whether or not our constitutionally protected right to privacy in our own person, place, and things is real. So I, I, I'm not going to be happy until we carve out constitutionally protected rights. And yes, that includes police reform, uh, federal police reform, because federal police reform is simply saying people have a right to live. They have a right to due process. A police officer is not a judge, jury, and an executioner. Okay? But anyway, the House passed the uh, Women's uh, Health Reproductive Act today, and Marjorie Taylor Greene was not happy that she lost. It should all be a shame. Killing a baby up until birth is a lack of civility. It's called murder. Hey, how about the border down there? Lack of civility. How about lack of laws or protecting and upholding our constitution? You should respect is the basic thing you're taught in church. Respect your taught in church? Are you kidding me? Try being a Christian and supporting you life. Try being a Christian and try to support life. Basically, watch your step, you're going to fall down. Control yourself. Oh, she is such a bully. She's such an ugly person. I love how she stands there, acting like that, accusing others of lack of civility. Yeah, and, and by the way, her, um, her, you could kill a baby up until birth comment is false. All that this does is what the Constitution requires and what has been the law of the United States of America since Roe v. Wade, since 1973, right? And that says viability. So that's around 24 weeks. This has nothing to do with right up until birth. She's making crap up because she's a sore loser. And she really, really gets in in, in people's faces with the civility thing and the... And then she yells at Debbie Dingell, why don't you try to be a Christian and be pro-life? This is not a Christian nation, Marge. This is a constitutional republic, okay? This has nothing to do with Christianity or Judaism or Islam or native religions or lack of religion or atheism or agnosticism or or zealous or... 
you know, whatever Freddie Mercury's family was. It has absolutely nothing to do with religion. Marge, this is a constitutional republic. It is a nation of laws. And the Supreme Court actually gets to say if laws pass constitutional muster. And about 40-some years ago, they said that a woman has the right to privacy in her own person, place, and things, including her uterus, up until viability of a fetus meaning when it can live outside of me hosting it. She is a sick, twisted freak of nature who bullies people, twists the truth, mangles and mutilates the law, inserts her own religious beliefs, and replaces the constitutional republic with a Christian nation philosophy, ideology, white supremacy, the whole bit. Everything is Nazism to her. Sick. Picking on Debbie Dingle. Debbie Dingle. Wow. Hey, listen, have a great weekend. Thank you for a successful fall fundraiser, a fall uh, pledge drive. You make me look good, and I love you for that. I love you. And happy birthday, Anthony.